The story begins with a 21-year-old girl named Yasu Ran, who has just graduated from university. Her dream is to receive a high salary, live in comfort without worrying about anything, and also become the president of the company and take the position of general director. And then Yasu Ran will become Miss Perfection. But she never thought that her graduation photo would be the last moment in a life that was supposed to be filled with success. By chance, Yasu Ran found herself in the realm of heaven and standing before the judge of hell next to his majesty's throne, not understanding how her life had changed so unexpectedly. His majesty was a short boy in the costume of a strange bird. He sits at his desk and yells indignantly, wondering what the situation is and how many more times this will happen this month. The girl stood opposite the young man, annoyed by the situation. The judge of hell behind her remarked that there might have been a system error that caused the data to be compromised and led to this misunderstanding. His Majesty, having softened, expressed sympathy, and with a slight embarrassment questioned her and me, wanting to understand what had happened. He gently informed her that due to some mistakes in systems and the wrong soul was taken, and now it will be necessary to correct this unpleasant mistake. The girl got angry and shouting at the young man shouted with indignation that she was a virgin, had never been on a date and did not deserve such a fate. And she told him that he would never be able to understand her grief. And so when she finally graduated from school and was preparing to enjoy life in society, her dreams were suddenly shattered when she was confronted with this unexpected reality. She could not understand how he dares to say that they made a mistake and took their lives as easily as if nothing strange had happened. This outraged the girl, who was unable to accept the event. She ordered him send her back immediately, or he will face the consequences of allowing her to embody the suffering of an innocent soul. If he does not listen, her anger will be merciless and inevitable. He, frightened and trembling, begged her to calm down, promising to immediately correct the mistake and return her. Yasu Ran sat down on his desk, defiantly asked if he was really going to send her back, doubting his words. Her voice was shrill, but he remained unmoved and silent. The sweaty boy, barely restraining his nervousness, confidently promised that she would be sent back, emphasizing his professionalism. However, the girl had a bad feeling. They left the room and found themselves in a huge amusement park. The guy explained that this is a place for its revival, emphasizing that their world keeps up with the times and undergoes strict quality control of services. The guy gave a short tour, pointing to the hill. He declared that this is a stairway to heaven, and the hills symbolize the beginning of a new life and not disaster to old age. The judge of hell, who was by her side the whole time, told her that these were his majesty's favorite attractions, reflecting his own preferences and tastes. Finally, they came to the hill, and the girl was amazed by what she saw. The hill stretched uphill and there was no end or edge in sight. It seemed as if its end was in heaven. After getting into the seat of the ride, Yasuran emphatically declared that she was ready to be sent right away, as she was not going to roam these gardens for so long as life on earth awaited her. The guy replied that, of course, they are ready to correct their mistake and send her. But for this, she has to say exactly what she wants and voice her desire. The girl thought, and, speaking decisively, said that she wanted to ensure a prosperous life for herself, become Miss Perfection, loved by everyone, marry Mr. Perfection, and be at the top of life. His Majesty, smiling, promised that he had fulfilled her wish. With a snap of his fingers, he sent her up, carrying her to new heights of life. The judge of hell asked his majesty if he was informed that this reincarnation machine was sending people to another time and why he made this decision. His majesty explained that he had sent Suran there because she was the chosen one. The judge of hell hearing this was very surprised, not expecting such a turn of events. Opening her eyes, Suran saw herself among the green trees, and thinking it was a continuation of her dream, she hoped to wake up in her cozy bed soon. Touching herself, the young girl realized that her delicate skin was covered with some kind of smooth fur, and after looking around, Suran realized with horror that she had turned into a panda. The girl was furious, full of determination. She thought that if she had to meet the king of hell again, she would kill him without hesitation, because of course she did not expect such a reason from him. Now Panda Suran had a difficult test. She was chased by a bear claiming that only she could make the world right and brighten his dim life. After becoming a panda, she was surprised to realize that she began to understand animals and their world. 
although until today she was not interested in animals. But thanks to the evil joke of fate, this has now become her reality. Running away from the bear, she stopped to rest. At that moment, a boar jumped out from behind the bushes and looking sternly at her, ordered her to come to him immediately. She began to run away from the boar, not understanding why he wanted to. Pandas, it seemed to her, were obviously also a kind of bears. Therefore, it confused her thoughts even more, and there was no time for reflection. Finally escaping from the boar, Suran fell on the grass and sobbed, cursing the king of hell. A young girl in despair wondered where her ideal life was. She remembered her words, said before leaving for a new life, and was shocked. The realization that she herself had invited such a fate struck her to the core. Suran thought that she never had color photos, even her last photo was in black and white. This is probably where the King of Hell got her new color from. It is good that the panda is a national treasure. Their life in captivity was suitable even for Suran, because this life looked just perfect, which was exactly what the young girl wished for. But now she was in the wild, transported back in time, being chased by a black bear along with a brown boar, which only increased her sense of panic. While the panda was running away from its pursuers, a man standing on a tree branch with a drawn arrow managed to notice this scene, and it really drew his attention to what was happening. He found it a little strange but interesting, and he followed what was happening intently, unable to look away. The panda realized that he could no longer run and filled with despair cried out for help, hoping for a miracle in this hopeless situation. Although, in fact, Suran has already managed to say goodbye to life. Suddenly she saw the arrows pierce the bear's skin, and with a dull roar he fell and died, which caused in her heart mixed feelings of relief and fear. Su Ran saw a man gracefully jump down from a tree branch, his movements light but sure as if he was part of the forest. This man turned out to be incredibly handsome, so much so that Su Ran forgot her fears for a moment, mesmerized by his appearance alone. And the fact that he continued to hold a weapon in his hands did not scare her. Panda Su Ran, mesmerized by his beauty, slowly reached towards him, hoping he would hug her. Then she forgot to even think that she was currently in the body of a young beauty. Wrapping her arms around his leg, Suran snuggled up to him like a frightened little animal. The man looked at the tiny panda in surprise. The man carefully lifted the panda in his arms and carefully examined it, as if he was trying to solve a secret. Somewhere in the depths of his soul, his intuition told him that this was no ordinary panda. Examining Suran, the man asked what kind of beast she was and why, as a prince, he had never seen her before. The girl was surprised to learn that her savior was a prince. It gave hope for a new life. But becoming a panda, she understood that she would starve and suffer if someone was not found to take care of her. The panda waved its paws happily, but the prince said that she did not deserve to be his prey. Then he carefully put it back. Suran was surprised to be called booty and not cute enough. And then she remembered that she is now in the skin of a panda, so she can expect a different attitude towards herself. The panda again clung to the prince's leg, not wanting to let go. She was enchanted his muscular legs and was not going to give up, despite his coldness. She tried to conquer him with her beauty, wondering how he could remain indifferent. He saw that the panda did not want to let him go and gently took her in his arms, saying that she would come with him. The prince on his majestic horse crossed the borders of the empire, holding a small panda in his hands. A huge number of people have gathered around him, who meet him with admiration and joy. In the crowd of people stood a little girl who, noticing the panda, ran to the prince. With wide open eyes, she asked what kind of black and white creature it was because it looked so strange and unusual. Quickly ran up to the girl and bending over to her, quietly said that they should behave calmly because in front of them is the prince, regent of the Southern Empire of Qi, His Majesty Yi Fen. The people around gossiped among themselves discussing that the prince was the reincarnation of a demon, while others called him a demon lord. Looking at the prince, the panda wondered if he had heard all these gossips. However, his expression remained completely indifferent. The girl understood that he must have good reasons for such behavior. Even though this great hero had saved her, she needed to find a way to change her terrible mind about him. Jumping on the horse's head, she began to dance creating a picturesque sight in front of the enthusiastic crowd. She attracted more and more attention with her graceful movements. 
but suddenly she accidentally tripped and began to slide down the horse's leg. The horse, observing everything, tilted his head slightly and unexpectedly threw the panda into the air. However, the panda flew a little and landed right on the prince's head. Her soft paws lightly touched his hair and she froze. People watching this scene were smiling enthusiastically, when suddenly someone exclaimed that this spectacle was superior to any monkey show. Surprised people did not understand who could have said that. The children cheerfully pointed their fingers at the prince, happily declaring that he was not as scary as the adults said. After all, he even arranged a whole performance with his funny pet. The prince heard all these conversations, and a feeling of deep shame settled in his heart. It seemed unbearable to him that his greatness and authority were reduced to a simple spectacle that amused the crowd. The prince quickly grabbed the panda and hid it in his inner pocket, sternly telling it to know its place, or he would throw it out into the street where it could dance all it wanted. The prince reached the imperial house and, looking into his pockets, carefully looked at the panda that was comfortably settled inside. His gaze was very alert, and this made her a little embarrassed. He leaned closer and whispered in her ear, asking her if she realized what her fault was. The prince noticed that her eyes were closed. Opening her eyes, the panda tried to look at him, but the closeness of his lips made her incredibly hot. A little startled, she felt anxiety at his closeness. Sue Ran gently touched his face and gently pushed him away, trying to regain some distance. After feeling the tenderness of the little paws, the prince involuntarily touched his lips, experiencing a strange feeling. Then he felt embarrassed and coughed, trying to hide his embarrassment. The prince, noticing the expression on her face, wondered if she understood human language. His musings deepened as he realized that the panda might be understanding his words. The prince, feeling unusual curiosity, decided to check the reaction of the little girl. He turned to her with curiosity in his voice, asking why he shouldn't skin her and use her skin. Suran was scared to the point of trembling, her body shaking with fear. The prince continued that the skin of the pandochka would serve him to create a pair of new gloves as compensation for damaged clothes. The girl was horrified, unable to understand how the prince dared to suggest such a thing. The prince noticed how Suran was trembling with fear and realized that this mysterious beast really understood his words. The prince carefully placed the panda on the table. His movements were soft and careful, as if he was afraid of harming the fragile creature. The girl could not understand why she always felt so deeply embarrassed in the presence of this boy. Standing next to the little animal, the prince drew the attention of his subjects, urging them to come to him. The panda, waiting, was full of hope that the prince would feed her. The girl eagerly thought that the food in this magnificent palace must be a real delicacy. Saliva flowed imperceptibly from the corners of her mouth as she imagined the delicious food. Looking at the panda, he noticed that it resembled a rabbit and offered it to eat grass. He gently touched her ears, smiling at the unexpected and sweet resemblance. Suddenly, the girl remembered that pandas eat bamboo and was shocked. She didn't want bamboo, dreaming of crab, salmon, shark fin soup, roast beef, and roast duck. With a snap of his finger, the prince ordered his subjects to bring him one dish each from whatever was available. The servants brought many different dishes. Suran, watching this, thought that the prince was a real noble despot. The prince watched how the panda ate with pleasure and thought that such a luxurious life, full of abundance, seemed boring and uninteresting to him. The man felt a strange desire to hug the little animal. This desire seemed unexpected and incomprehensible to him. He timidly stretched out his hand, and when he touched her soft fur, he felt a strange calmness. The prince, noticing the mess after dinner, said with slight irritation that it was only dinner, and the panda had made such a mess. He ordered her to wipe herself off immediately. The little girl accidentally choked, and the prince took care of her in a panic. Patting her gently on the back, he saw how relieved she was and heaved a sigh of relief. She was so soft and gentle that the prince could not resist and squeezed her ears a little. The subjects watched his gentle gestures in surprise, and, noticing their looks, the prince, blushing with embarrassment, quickly moved away from the mantelpiece, trying to hide his shame. The prince coldly told the animal that her lack of basic etiquette was absolutely outrageous and that the food was scattered everywhere, making a total mess. Taking care of the little beast wasn't such a bad idea, he thought.
The boy told Panda that she was probably full by now, so it was time for her to go and wash up. The maid tried to take the panda in her arms to carry it and wash it, but the prince declared that the panda would go with him. Panda was so uncomfortable that she did not want to go wash with the prince because she is a girl. As they walked, the panda tried to break free. The prince sharply lowered her into the basin of water, and the panda immediately began to splash violently, calling for help and indignant, how could such a mockery of national property be done? The man ordered the panda to be more restrained, otherwise he would eat her. Sue ran, froze in fear as she realized that the prince might actually get his way after a thunderstorm. Horror reflected in her eyes when she understood the seriousness of his words in. The girl, trembling, thought that the prince, at least, should use warm water. She couldn't believe that someone could wash in such cold water. The prince sternly told the panda to keep calm, and, taking the brush in his hands, he added that if the panda moved even an inch, he would take her life. He began to beat the panda with the brush with all his might, while sternly ordering her to remain quiet. The panda moaned in pain. The man carefully examined the panda and was surprised to find that not only had the fur not been washed, but it was actually black and not dirty as he had assumed. To Suran, the prince seemed like a real barbarian, because everyone knew that it was this coloring that made a panda special and cute. He felt a little sorry for the little panda and he, succumbing to the impulse, gently ran his hand over her soft, fluffy fur and stroked her. After washing the pandochka, the prince picked it up, intending to hand it over to his subject so that she could carefully wipe it dry. But automatically, the panda began to shake and did not even notice how it splashed the pea Adana and the prince with water. A little annoyed, the prince asked the panda for advice on how best to prepare it for dinner, to fry it with spicy herbs, or to steam it. The panda was frightened and thought that he was really going to eat her, and howled in terror. At that moment, it seemed to her that her life would end again, and she would end up in the Lord of Hell. The man sighed, saying that his words did not matter, and that the little girl would finally calm down. Then he ordered his subordinates to wash him well after such a stressful day. The prince carefully covered the panda with a towel, and she sighed with relief, hoping that he would not bother her anymore. Wynne started to take off his clothes, and Sue Ran turned away awkwardly, trying not to look. For the girl, it was beyond her strength. She knew that if she looked at him, she might faint. But still, she was so interested that she couldn't resist and sneaked a look. Sue Ran had never been so close to the handsome man while he was taking a shower in her life. The girl was surprised to see the numerous scars that covered them the prince's body. She couldn't help but notice it. She was struck by the mysterious story of his injuries, which spoke of his difficult path and courage. Night came, and the prince was already fast asleep in his soft and warm bed. Panda watched this and could not come to terms with the thought that she would have to sleep on the cold floor. Suran decided that instead of depending on anyone, she would only rely on herself. She began to look for something that could provide her with comfort and warmth. Approaching the screen, Su Ran noticed the prince's robe and decided to climb into it. However, she tripped and fell, making so much noise that she herself was frightened by the noise. The prince, hearing the noise, woke up and saw the panda. Approaching her, he asked what she was doing. Seeing her plight, he felt sorry this indolent beast K.A. Taking the panda in his arms, the prince carefully placed it on his bed. She didn't quite understand what he was doing, because she just wanted to hide in his clothes. The prince ordered the lady to behave well and sleep peacefully. He warned that if she disturbed him again during his sleep, he would immediately send her to the kitchen. She could not believe that they would have to sleep in one bed, because she was a girl, and it seemed extremely uncomfortable to her, especially since he was almost naked. And she realized that it didn't matter. His bed was so soft and comfortable that she quickly forgot about her doubts. Realizing that she was just a little doll, she didn't care. Lying next to the prince, she felt a pleasant aroma, reminiscent of the smell of historical incense, which emanated from him and filled the room with its unusual charm. The day was extremely tiring for the panda, and she snuggled up to the prince, trying to find peace and fall asleep next to him. Sue Ran gasped. She had never felt so comfortable. Thoughts about the prince's scars did not leave Suran's mind. She guessed that he had to go through a lot of trials, but feminine curiosity demanded that she know what they were. 
As they fell asleep, they were watched from the darkness by the king and judge of hell, their gaze filled with dark mystery. Waking up from the feeling of someone else's presence, the prince opened his eyes sharply and cautiously looked around the room, trying to catch any sounds or movements that seemed unfamiliar to him. The king of hell quickly used his power, and the prince fell asleep again. The king breathed a sigh of relief, realizing that their presence had not been noticed and the danger had passed. They stood side by side, watching the panda carefully. Understanding the complexity of the situation, they knew that they had to face an even bigger problem that needed an urgent solution. The king of hell and the judge tried to wake up the panda, but she was sleeping so soundly that they thought she was getting used to a comfortable life very quickly. The king thought that if the machine had not malfunctioned, then his plan would not have failed. The time and simple P were set correctly, but the specified view was wrong. The judge of hell asked the king if they needed to reincarnate Miss Sue, but the king refused, deeming it unnecessary, as this unfortunate mistake turned out to be a much better decision for the girl than they had planned. He continued, considering that since this guy doesn't even let women near him, the current situation isn't that bad, and even, for the guy himself, it's just a gift from fate. The king of hell tensed and said that it was better to leave the situation as it was. The judge, after carefully examining the panda, asked if she would be willing to cooperate with them to resolve the situation. With the help of magic, the king woke up Suran. Waking up, she opened her eyes and, startled by the sudden awakening, asked what was really happening around her. The king of hell stood next to her, carefully watching her reaction. In a thin but clear voice, he told her to turn and look at him. Upon seeing the king of hell, Su Ron became enraged and screamed, expressing her indignation. The king of hell, calmly observing her reaction, explained that he had come to restore her human form. Her rage instantly turned to joy. With a smile on her face, Su Ron asked if she would really become human, feeling her heart fill with hope and excitement. The king said that Su Ron should take this pill, and at the next full moon, she would become human again. The girl doubtingly asked if this was not the same reason as her ideal life. The king explained that she would be able to become human only on a full moon and offered a way to completely return her to human form. She will have to decide if she really wants it or not. The king added that there was one condition. To become human, she only needed to make the prince's heart beat. Otherwise, she will remain a panda for the rest of her days. Suddenly, she came to her senses and realized the meaning of his words. Shouting, she demanded to continue the conversation. But wiping her eyes, she saw no one and thought that it was just a strange dream. Seeing a huge pill, she wondered whether it was reality or a dream. In the end, she decided to check the situation, because she needed to find out if this was a real chance to change her life. The panda lay down on top of the prince, listening to his heartbeat. But not hearing him... She was amazed and could not understand how this was even possible and thought that she had fallen into a dream. Panda, holding the huge pill that the king of hell gave her, she understood that it was enough to dream. It's time to turn your plans into reality and take action to change your life. No sooner had she eaten the huge pill than she felt her body begin to change, and soon she began to transform from a panda back into a human, resuming her human form. Having carefully examined herself from all sides, she realized with amazement that she had indeed returned to human form. Her body was the same as before, and she felt a great relief. Sitting on the prince's bed, she realized that she remained naked and realized that she, you need to consume men eat you energy to complete the conversion. Suddenly, the prince opened his eyes and suddenly looked at Suran. Out of surprise and fright, she quickly jumped up and tried to cover herself with a blanket but she blushed in shame. The prince looked intently at the girl, and his eyes expressed suspicion and confusion. He asked how she ended up in his bed and who she was. Sue Ran focused her thoughts as she contemplated that the script was obviously prepared specially. She was amazed that the prince hadn't woken up even when the king of hell was here. She tried to run away, but before she could take a step, the prince grabbed her by the arm. Sue Ran was surprised froze, not knowing what to do next. Suran felt a deep shame, finding herself almost naked, barely covering her body with a blanket. But she was even more worried that, that she was lying next to such a handsome man in bed. The girl was lost in thought about what to do. 
At first, she decided that she could tell the prince that she was the panda, but she was afraid that he would throw her out and her mission would fail. Suran was worried that the prince, upon learning the truth, would think she was a demon and burn her. She could not return to the image of a panda and was afraid that her luxurious life would end. She thought about how to get out of the situation without consequences, but the prince's look, full of determination, confused her. The prince looked at her intently, holding her hand tightly, looked her straight in the eyes, and said with unwavering confidence that she now had nowhere to run. His words sounded like a sentence. Realizing that there was no other way out, the girl decided to take extreme measures. She quickly decided on the only possible option, knocking the prince out, hoping that would give her time to escape. Hitting his forehead on the forehead, the girl immediately felt a sharp pain in her head. Realizing that she might have gone a little overboard, Suran was horrified by what she had done. The prince was lying unconscious, and Suran, being on top of him, realized that everything did not go according to plan. And such thoughts made her even more afraid. Suddenly, the girl turned into a panda and, sighing, realized that it was now impossible to escape. With each attempt, the situation only worsened, and she found herself in a trap from which it is difficult to find a way out. The prince, coming to his senses with a severe headache, touched his forehead and was surprised to find a huge lump. He did not understand what had happened and began to recall the adventures of the night. Realizing what had happened, the prince remembered about the woman last night. The memories of her mysterious appearance began to return, and he tried to understand how all this could happen. He decided to check if his panda was there. The prince found her with his eyes and made sure that she was lying on the bed, calm and motionless. The panda was so cute that his hands involuntarily reached for her. Taking the panda in his arms, he noticed that it also had a bump on its forehead. Both had the same crowded places, which indicated their joint event. And this added even more mystery to the recent events. The man called the servants and ordered guards to be posted throughout the area so that security measures could be put into effect immediately. The prince was angry with this damn woman who dared to hit him. The servant asked what had happened this time, suggesting that perhaps the same dangerous killer had reappeared. He looked worried and was waiting for an explanation. The prince was deeply irritated and angry, shouting at the servant that he did not want an explanation of what had happened or why it was necessary. The servant bowed and replied that he would carry out the prince's order. The prince, supplementing his order, ordered that the servant should immediately call the court physician to examine the pandochka. He wanted to make sure of her condition and get a professional opinion. The servant, leaning towards the panda with surprise, asked if it was really the prince who had given the nickname to this little one little animal. He looked shocked and interested, trying to understand the situation. After lunch, the panda sat in the gazebo near the house, enjoying the warmth of the sun's rays and singing a melody to himself under the nose. Suran thought about how to solve the problem with the prince's heart, because his heart does not beat. Her mind was filled with anxiety as to how to find a way to restore his vitality. The King of Hell had not explained to her how to deal with the problem, and Su Ran had no idea what to do. However, she remembered a scientific method that she could try, electric shock. The girl knew what was in the hospitals a defibrillator is used to restore the heart rhythm or to bring the pulse back to normal. And Su Ran thought this idea was simply brilliant but she did not know where to find a defibrillator in this wilderness. She thought about the possibility of using lightning, and various images and methods began to appear in her head. She wondered if it would lead to his death. The idea seemed scary and risky, but given the lack of alternatives, she saw no other way out. Suran's conscience awoke. She realized that she should stop taking this place for granted. After all, the prince lives with a stopped heart, so he must survive even after being struck by lightning. The girl remembered that the king of hell told her that it is possible to become a human only on a full moon, and this happens on the 15th day of the lunar calendar. She wondered what day it was. As they passed by, the two maids discussed that tomorrow, the 15th, they would receive their monthly allowance. Panda understood that tomorrow would be the decisive day. Panda hastily headed for the house, realizing that she needed to prepare everything for tomorrow. She knew that time was short, and every minute counted. The door opened, and the servant, bowing to the prince, greeted him with all due respect. 
He confidently entered the room, and immediately there was a grave silence. The panda was sitting below and happily waved a paw at the prince. Thinking about the possibility of an electric shock, she felt uncomfortable and anxious in his presence, but tried to remain calm. The prince leaned over to the doll and, carefully examining it, asked what kind of strange bandage it was, with an animal on his head. The servant, bowing to the prince, informed that the bandage on the head of the panda was made by the doctor Chen. He added that the doctor was concerned about her condition and decided to treat the lump. S. Luga, bowing his head, waited to see if the prince liked the bandage and was afraid that the prince might punish Dr. Chen for its appearance or quality. He was worried that this could have serious consequences for the doctor. The prince ordered the servant to tell Dr. Chen what he should collect their things and retire. B. More, the doctor was not allowed to work in the court hospital. Pandochka remembered how Dr. Chen, taking care, tied a bow to hide the bump and soothed her. She was outraged that the prince dismissed such a good doctor. The panda sat in the prince's arms, angrily thinking about how he could fire the doctor over such trifles. She considered it an outrageous, shameful, and shameful act. The prince, continuing the conversation, ordered the servant to invite the king to his possessions and informed him that he would look after the dumpling. He also promised to double his salary. The boy sat on the bed, holding the panda on his lap and gently stroking it. Panda, watching this, could not help but admire how such softness and cruelty could be present at the same time. In the evening, Suran watched while chewing an apple into the window. She reasoned that in order to electrocute the prince, she would need not only a metal conductor, but also the help of the heavens. Panda wondered how much longer she would have to wait until the right lightning appeared to carry out her plan. She knew that this moment could be decisive for her further actions. Suddenly, a storm broke out and thunder cut the sky. Lightning struck brightly, causing the panda to jump back in fear and the maddened glare that engulfed her. It was a thunderstorm that scared the defenseless panda very much. Had the heavens really decided to help her? This question never left Su Ran's mind. Su Ran thought that this was just a wonderful opportunity. Tonight, the lightning just has to strike the prince and help her in her brilliant plan. The panda was incredibly happy that the thunderstorm had started, continuing to look out the window and be happy. She hoped the storm would continue, giving her a chance. The prince, seeing the panda, carefully picked it up in his arms and asked with curiosity what it was doing here and why it looked so confused. Another told the panda that she should not be outside during a thunderstorm. The panda was upset because I did not count on such a quick appearance of him, and she realized that her plan hadn't even started yet. The prince held the panda tightly and did not understand why she was so naughty today. The panda squirmed and struggled to break free, wanting him to let her go so she could go outside. Whirlwind Prince went to pet the panda, and she felt her body relaxes from a gentle touch. It was so pleasant that the panda plunged into a state of absolute bliss, forgetting all his worries. Suddenly, the panda remembered that now was not the time for that. Pushing the prince's hand away with her paws, she wondered why she allowed herself to drown in pleasure just because she was being stroked. She suddenly exclaimed that she urgently needed to get up a person and return home. After these words, the panda suddenly jumped out of the prince's hands and ran headlong into the street, leaving him in the room. The prince watched as the panda ran away and with a little smile calmly closed the door, leaving her to sleep outside under the starry sky. Panda realized that she had neglected one important detail. It was cold outside, and nothing could warm her. At the same time, she wondered if the prince even planned to take his panda back. Su Ran decided that she needed to get the prince's attention any way she could. She cried even worse, hoping that her tears would touch his heart and make him change his mind. The prince stood behind the door and looked thoughtfully at the closed door. The door, wondering how long the little panda will be able to withstand the cold and the weather outside, and whether it should be returned. He hoped that the Pandolchka would not stay in the cold for too long, because the weather was becoming more and more severe. The prince mentally wished that she would soon return to the warmth of his arms in. Prince P went to the window and saw how the rain turned into a real downpour, and the wind howled stronger and stronger. He felt even more anxious about the panda staying outside in such bad weather. When the thunder roared even louder, the prince could not stand it and opened the door, going in search of the panda. 
he decided to find out what this little mischievous creature was doing in such terrible weather. The panda, frightened and looking for shelter, hid behind the curtain. She watched carefully as the prince approached her, hoping to remain unnoticed. She sat waiting for the prince, convinced that all he had to do was touch the curtains she had nailed together, and his touch would produce the effect she had been waiting for. Sue Ran hoped that upon contact with the curtain, the prince would feel a slight shock, which would cause a defibrillator effect and help her implement her plan. The panda, watching the shadow of the prince approaching, could not hide his excitement. With every step he took, he got closer to the curtains, and she waited with bated breath for the plan to go into effect. The prince, opening the curtain, entered the place where the panda was hiding. At that moment, lightning suddenly struck, and a bright burst of electricity illuminated the plane, filling it with a dramatic glow. Sue Ran was filled with joy, realizing that her mission had succeeded. She wrote me she was tired and impatiently waiting for the moment when she would return home, enjoying the feeling of victory. But suddenly Sue Ran felt the prince's warm hand gently touch her shoulder. Smiling slightly, he asked what exactly she was trying to do, luring him here in such a storm and danger. The panda looked at him in surprise and asked if he had really been electrocuted by touching the curtains, as she had expected a completely different result. He grabbed her by the scruff of the neck and, as he left the room, said he would deal with her when they returned, clearly showing his displeasure. The panda was frightened and shaking with fear, fearing that she too might be struck by lightning, for even the thought of it was terrifying to her. Thunder sounded outside, and the little girl, overcome with fear, closed her eyes tightly, hoping that this loud sound would not bring her harm. They walked through the yard, and the panda, opening her eyes, realized that, fortunately, she had not been struck by lightning. She felt a slight sense of relief, but was still anxious about the unknown. While the prince gently carried the panda to the house, the king of hell and the judge hid in the bushes, carefully watching his every move and trying to understand what was happening. The king asked what they were doing in the middle of the night. The judge replied that mortals have their reasons for walking at night, perhaps walking their dogs or simply enjoying the silence of the night. The judge declared that the deity had tamed the panda and now walks it like a regular pet. At that moment, the prince heard a rustling in the bushes, became alert, and began to listen to the sounds, asking who was there. Drawing his sword and holding the panda in one hand, the prince aimed his weapon at the bushes, ready to defend against a possible threat. He carefully followed every movement, expecting that danger might appear. Suddenly, lightning struck the prince's sword, and he and the panda fell to the ground. Both passed out, feeling a strong electric shock that made them tremble and twitch. Those who were hiding in the bushes stood nearby and carefully watched the events. The judge, turning to the king, asked what he would order to do next, because the situation turned out to be more dangerous than expected. The king of hell ordered the prince and the panda to be brought into the room. He and the judge, carefully grabbing the prince by the legs, began to drag him to the house, first to ensure their safety and then to sort it out. The panda continued to lie on Prince, and she had a dream. In this dream, she turned into a human and found herself next to the happy Prince. The Prince embraced her, and there was an atmosphere of love and warmth around her. The girl felt deep satisfaction, as if all her dreams had come true, and she had finally found her place in the world. When the panda started to wake up, she was awakened by a familiar voice calling her Nay and Me. Half asleep, she muttered about how she was a failure and that her sweet dream had been trampled. Waking up, the panda noticed that she was sitting on the prince, who was unconscious. She realized that he had been struck by lightning and was horrified that her plan had such a dangerous outcome. Getting closer to his chest, the panda put her ear to it, trying to hear his heartbeat. She waited, hoping for the slightest sign of life. But the panda didn't hear anything. Dead silence reigned in the air. She lay there trying to figure out why the prince's heart wasn't beating. A feeling of deep anxiety filled her. Suran was surprised why the heart was not responding to her attempts. The lightning was supposed to change something, but instead it only made things worse to the point where she didn't know if he was even alive, was standing behind the pan, smiling. He asked what had happened to her and told her that in his haste last time he had forgotten to tell her how to restore the prince's heartbeat. The king of hell ordered Suran to kiss the prince three times. Suran was shocked and couldn't believe that this was the only way to solve the situation. 
Su Ran was confused and confused by the Hell King's sudden demand. She said that it would be her first kiss, to which the king replied that sooner or later she would have to do it. She looked at the prince and thought that after the kiss, she would return home. It seemed like a bargain to her, as she could comply with the king of hell's demand and still get what she needed. She was tormented by doubts. Despite the prince's beauty, is it worth spending his first kiss for such a situation? She thought maybe she should save this special moment for true love. But can she take responsibility if she kisses him and nothing changes? She hesitated, thinking about the possible consequences of her actions. If she doesn't kiss him, she will remain a panda forever. Vague doubts tore at her from the inside, questioning her decision and future. Looking at the unconscious prince, the panda carefully examined his face, trying to calm down and pull himself together. Her thoughts raced between fear and hope. Approaching his lips, the panda thought about home, about Simu, and that maybe this kiss was the only chance to go back. Sighing deeply, the panda decided she would do it anyway. She gathered all her determination, ready to cope with this difficult task and try to save the prince. And she sharply touched the lips of the handsome prince with her lips, feeling the warmth of his skin. The girl had no experience in first kisses, so her feelings suggested that it should be done exactly that way. The judge and the king of hell watched what was happening with narrowed eyes. The king of hell quietly noticed that it was quite difficult for the youngest girl. The panda glanced at the king of hell and asked why he was surprised with surprise in her voice. Hadn't he ever seen someone kiss for the first time? She sat down thinking, because she has no experience at all. Determined not to step on the same rake twice, the panda decided that this time he would do things in a more cunning way. The little girl slowly approached the prince's lips, trying to be more careful than last time. Her heart was beating faster, but she focused on being gentle and careful. With closed eyes, she kissed him softly and tenderly, trying to embody all her best intentions in this touch. It was the second kiss, and after kissing him, the panda was surprised at what lips to lips really felt like. She felt that this moment was filled with emotions that were not familiar to her before. Su Ran looked at the sleeping prince and suddenly her heart beat faster, filled with excitement and unexpected trepidation. She felt that this moment meant more to her than she could have imagined. It seems that a kiss can really revive the heart, and Su Ran has experienced this firsthand. She realized that the magic of a kiss could be more powerful than she expected. Panda let out a deep breath, realizing that she only had one kiss left to kiss the prince, and it was her last chance. She knew that after this, she would be able to return to human form and, gaining determination, kissed the prince once more. After successfully kissing the prince, she finally felt freed from her dependence on others and was able to become herself again. Joyfully dancing, she was looking forward to a new life, thinking with delight about her return to her native land. Her thoughts were only about happiness and the boundless freedom that awaited her. But the king of hell interrupted her momentary joy telling her that she wasn't listening to him at all. A kiss won't save the prince and getting home won't be as easy as she thought. The panda glared at the king, disbelieving that her first kiss had been in vain. She was disappointed because all her efforts were in vain. The king of hell explained that in order to fulfill the conditions of the three kisses, there are several additional requirements that must be met. Only after their implementation will the plan be considered complete. The king of hell explained that in order to fulfill the conditions of the kisses, the panda had to be human, the prince had to be a saint, and the kiss had to last at least three seconds. Panda did not meet any of the conditions. Panda P jumped up to the king, grabbed him by the tie, and with fierce eyes asked who came up with these rules to play on her nerves. The king of hell pushed her away and asked how he could make amends. He added that, like her, he wanted to recover the data and help her get back as soon as possible. Panda angrily stated that this was his mistake from the beginning and that his demands made no sense. She decided that she would not help him anymore. The king of hell and the judge stood by the panda and the king declared that only she could fix the situation. He also explained that only the panda can activate the reincarnation machine since the source of energy for the machine is the prince regent. That's why his heart is at the moment does not fight. The king of hell added that the only way to restore the energy was to make the prince's heart start beating again, as this was the only way to complete all the conditions. 
The panda looked at the king, pretending not to be interested, and said that he did not understand how it had anything to do with her, because it was his mistake. There was a mixture of annoyance and displeasure in her gaze. She asked what it all meant. The king explained that the panda came from another world, and therefore her situation is unique. This is the only way to restore the prince's heart and ensure her return. As a character from another world, she has a unique ability to influence events often found in magical stories and games. The gods cannot intervene directly, so her power is extraordinary. Suran did not like the king. She stated that he continued to deceive her and asked him if he thought that she was some naive teenager who believed in such fictions. The king replied that if it were not so, they would not come to her so often to ask for a solution to this problem. The king added that if she were not so important, the director of the company would not have treated her so kindly, and they would have stopped worrying about her a long time ago. He also said that by helping them, she helps herself. It sounded convincing. Therefore, he emphasized that if she regains her energy, she will be able to return home. The king of hell added that the young girl had only one option. If she doesn't use it, her desire to return home will remain just a dream. The panda stood full of rage and anger. She asked the king of hell who said she only had one option. She also threatened that if she failed, she could drag him down with her. Su Ran grabbed the king by the shirt and declared that she only transforms into a human once a month, so she might age sooner than completing her mission. The panda holding the king shouted that he was guilty and they would both die. The king begged her to calm down, promising that success in the mission would allow her to remain human longer. The judge promised support. The king confirmed the judge's words and asked to let him go. He handed Pandochka a red box, explaining that it was the newest magical item from the afterlife. Magic Bells 1.0. Opening the box, the little girl found another one inside. She noted with displeasure that the name looked rather banal. Opening the second box and finding it empty, the little girl looked at the king in surprise. At that moment, he announced with a joyful shout, Surprise! The little girl hit the king with her paw, to which he replied that it was only a joke. The judge, who was standing by, added that the king really had an unusual talent for annoying people. Opening the box, the little girl saw two beautiful bells. The king watched with interest and barked at her emotions. And then he asked if they weren't wonderful and added that bells have many different functions. The king said that he would soon have a new meeting and she would have to deal with the bells on her own. Pandochka, smiling, examined them, considering them quite cute. As he walked, the king added that if the little girl was in danger, she would only have to ring the bell and he would send someone to help. He also advised her not to cry in gratitude. Pandochka looked at the bells with surprise and admiration. The magic item seemed quite ordinary, but the design was magnificent. She decided to try him in action. When Sunran touched the bell, she felt some strange energy, and when she started to ring it, she realized that she was beginning to be transported to another space. In front of her, everything began to change. Colors and shapes entwined in a chaotic game. Soon she found herself in a completely new place, completely different from where she was before. Front of her eyes with the buttons Form, Wardrobe, Other, and Enforced Amnesia. She clicked on Form and was presented with options to change appearance and characteristics. Pandochka took on a human face and was pleasantly surprised by the change. In this space, she could freely change her form which opened up new possibilities for her. Looking at the forced amnesia button, Suran thought, this meant that she could make someone lose their memory if she was caught, and this could not but please the young girl. She noted that the balance was three. Suran immediately thought that when she had to forcefully kiss the prince, she should erase his memory. The girl wondered why she had decided that she would have to forcefully kiss the prince. She began to doubt her determination, and the fact that her plan was really effective. She wondered what the wardrobe button was for, and without thinking, she clicked on it. Suddenly, she found herself in a huge dressing room filled with various clothes and accessories. In in the corner stood a large cosmetic table on which cosmetics and mirrors were placed. It was the dream of any girl, a huge dressing room. Sue ran excitedly ran around the room looking at the clothes, handbags, shoes, accessories, jewelry, and most of all the cosmetics. 
Suran took the faceless outfits in her hands and happily started trying them on. Her eyes shone with delight because she realized that all this beauty now belonged to her and she could choose any style. Exclaiming, Sue ran ran transformation, she enthusiastically began trying on each outfit, enthusiastically enjoying each new look and feeling her style become more and more vivid. Her joy knew no bounds. Sue Ran wanted so much to stay here, enjoying all the possibilities that opened up before her and experience a new level of freedom for the expression itself. Sue Ran got tired of changing clothes endlessly and wondered why she couldn't change her clothes with the push of a button. This would seem to be a much more convenient and faster option. The girl, seeing that it was already midnight, realized in a panic that she would turn into a human. Time was running out and she had to act fast. Suran made up her mind and tried to calm down. She reminded herself that she should just kiss the prince and then erase his memories. Everything looked simple enough. She decided that this time the king of hell would not stand in her way. She quickly ran, firmly deciding that there must be a performance his mission. Entering the prince's bedroom, Su Ran was full of self-confidence and determination. But when the young girl saw that handsome man in bed, her confidence began to dissipate. When the prince was sleeping, his usually cold face seemed so innocent and defenseless, and Su Ran couldn't help but fall in love with the sight, so she stared at the prince. Su Ran had already kissed him before, but now she felt uncomfortable and shy. Why isn't it? It was so difficult when she did it before. The girl did not understand. Su Ran pulled herself together forcefully and plucked up the courage to press on his face, trying to wake him up, even though it was still the same problem with the star. The girl wondered why he did not wake up. Did he really get so upset? She continued to try to wake him up, but now she was worried about his physical condition. The prince slowly began to wake up. Noticing this, Su Ran waited anxiously preparing herself for her next move. The young girl was ready to act so as not to lose the moment. She began to lean into him, turning her lips into a mouthful for a kiss. Su Ran was worried about whether she would be able to make this kiss successful as you moved closer and closer to his lips. The kiss was successful. Su Ran now decided to activate the function and erase the prince's memory to make sure that he would not be able to remember what happened. It turned out that the kiss did not fall on the lips of the prince, but her lips touched his hands and with which he covered his face. This was what Su Ran noticed as she opened her eyes after the kiss. The prince, noticing the girl, pushed her away with an unexpected impulse. The man was not kidding when he saw a beautiful stranger in his husband's bed who was climbing up to him with kisses. And when the young man recognized that it was the same woman who was there that night, the prince looked at her with a malicious expression and declared that today she would not leave so easily. She screamed in horror and immediately ordered to activate the forced amnesia, hoping to avoid even more disaster. Su Ran prayed to the heavens that she would only have time to use this power. The prince instantly collapsed on the bed, passed out from the effects of forced amnesia. Su Ran realized that she now had two more attempts to use this feature. Su Ran sat there feeling her heart breaking. She realized that she had used one of the three attempts and things had not gone as planned, and it made her feel even worse. The girl sighed deeply, trying to calm down. She reminded herself that she had to learn from her mistakes and that she still had a chance to make things right, and it was just absolutely necessary to get home. Su Ran decided to kiss the prince first and then wake him up. The girl hoped that this would help to correct the situation in her favor and fulfill those curses and conditions of the king of hell. Holding his face, Suran kissed the prince gently again, hoping it would help him wake up. Her heart was beating fast with excitement. She saw the prince open his eyes and their eyes met. Suran could feel fear hanging in the air as every moment was filled with tension and uncertainty. The prince pushed her away sharply with one hand, and Suran fell to the floor. He looked at her in disbelief and asked who she was, and how she dared to approach him. He continued to shout, calling her crazy. Suran sat and wondered why he kept repeating the same words like a broken recorder. Shouldn't his vocabulary be bigger? He tried to grab and extended his hand to her. Suran instantly reacted to the danger and quickly shouted, Activate amnesia! It was her only way out to save herself. She felt the disappointment of a mischance, 
and saw that there was only one more attempt at forced amnesia left. The young girl's heart sank with despair. Su Ran, taking the rope in her hands, looked at the prince with determination. She said that he got her and, thinking that she could handle him, she decided to go to extreme measures because there was no way back for her. After tying up the prince, Su Ran smiled in satisfaction, looking at him with a sense of victory. She felt that she had finally taken the situation under control, and now nothing would prevent her from fulfilling all the conditions. Grabbing the prince by the nose and jerking him, Suran tried to wake him up, hoping it would work. Suran no longer had the patience to mess with a young man. After regaining consciousness and opening his eyes, the prince confusedly asked who she was and what was happening. He is simply crazy because every time he opens his eyes, he sees this crazy stranger. Leaning closer to him, she whispered that she was a kiss stealer and tried to fulfill her task. Her words sounded somewhat excited and a little threatening. Su Ran leaned closer to him and added that she would not harm him and he had nothing to fear. At that moment, the young girl herself was surprised by her courage. The girl said that she is ready to release the prince, but only after he allows her to kiss him three times. Su Ran then meekly waited for his answer. The prince became enraged shouting that she was crazy and should stay away from him as well. Throughout his life, he entered into battles with various opponents, but he had no idea that he would be immobilized by a girl. Suran grabbed his lips, pressed them together mockingly, and looking at him said that he could scream as much as he wanted. No one would hear him anyway. The girl decided that it was necessary to finish it as soon as possible, and, despite his protests, she kissed him again feeling that this was the only way to resolve the situation. While she was kissing him, the prince, gathering all his strength, summoned the swords that stood on a stand nearby, preparing them to attack. Su Ran, upon seeing this, quickly began to dodge the swords that were flying in her direction, trying to avoid the danger. It was, of course, very difficult, but she managed to escape death this time. The prince, deftly getting out of the ropes, went up. Then, looking at the girl, he asked what exactly she was trying to tell him and what old man had been coming to his bedroom every night in a row. As close to Su Ran as possible and asked glumly what exactly she was going to do to him, Su Ran immediately realized that things were bad. She managed to shout, activate amnesia, saw how the prince quickly covered her mouth. Her attempt to lose her memory seems to have been interrupted. Realizing the situation, the prince asked Su Ran if she was the one who hit his dumpling. Remembering the injured Pandochka, he was ready to tear anyone for her. Su Ran, looking at the prince, thought that he himself would be the one to blame for the slaughtered places of his beast if he did not let her go immediately. The girl understood that it would be quite difficult to get out on her own. Su Ran then remembered that he was just obsessed with cleanliness, and she stuck out her tongue and touched his hand, which covered her mouth. The girl expected that it would work. The prince abruptly pulled out his hand and shouted at her surprised by how she could commit such a disgusting act. His outrage was obvious, and he couldn't believe that someone would dare to do such a thing. That was her chance. Su Ran quickly shouted, Activate amnesia! And the prince passed out again, falling to the floor. Then the young girl breathed a sigh of relief. Half an hour passed, and Su Ran was satisfied that she was finally free from all her worries and could lie down peacefully enjoying the peace and quiet after so many adventures. Standing up and sighing, Su Ran smiled as she shot a confident look in the prince's direction. A satisfied smile appeared on her face, because the girl was very satisfied with the achieved result. Su Ran suddenly froze, realizing that she had forgotten something. It became clear to her that she had used her last attempt at forced amnesia and now had no more chances to erase the prince's memory. The girl grabbed her head in panic. She realized that she had used all the attempts of forced amnesia and never had time to kiss the prince. Her genius plan just burst like a soap bubble. Su Ran knew she needed to find another way. Fortunately, she still had 10 hours left to complete the task, and she hoped that the prince would not remember what had happened. The next day, the servant, on his way to the prince's house, was surprised to find the regent still asleep. He usually got up early to start training, and being this late was unusual for him. The prince woke up to the sounds coming from the yard, where the servant was calling loudly him, trying to wake up his highness because they were already running late. Pandochka, watching the prince with sleepy eyes, 
could not get rid of the feeling that she became interested in watching the young man wake up. The prince waking up would feel pain in his whole body. Pandochka, watching him, thought that nothing was full of adventures for the prince, and therefore he felt very bad. V turned back and saw a little boy next to him. After thinking a little, the prince decided that the problem could be in the bed. Pandochka did not understand why he looked at her so suddenly. The prince could not understand why he had the feeling that something was not quite right. Thoughts raced through his head, and he could not find any logical explanation for what had happened recently. Pandochka remembered how she spent the whole night sorting out the mess in the room after the recent events. Frightened, she wondered if the prince had suspected something suspicious, and drops of sweat appeared on her forehead from excitement. The prince, looking intently at the little animal, noticed that the dark circles under the eyes of the panda became even darker, and it was no joke that his highness worried. While getting dressed, the prince ordered his servants to summon the imperial doctor Chen to examine the doll. He wanted the doctor to help the animal get rid of the dark circles under its eyes. Pandoshka was shocked after hearing his words and imagined herself without dark circles under her eyes. Then the young girl felt her heart beat faster from excessive excitement. The prince, having dressed, ordered his servant to change the bed in order to ensure a comfortable rest after the night's restlessness. Yet his highness was convinced that the reason was in him. The panda understood that the prince was going to work and realized that she should be with him. There were only ten hours left before her transformation, which were ticking away, but she still had a chance. Jumping on the prince and clinging tightly to his sleeve, Pandochka begged him to take her with him. The prince, not understanding her, only told the little animal to get away from him. The prince waved his hand, pushing the panda back, and ordered the servant to look after her. The cake, falling, landed on the servant, who tried to hold it. But Suran knew that she needed to be with his highness to complete such an important mission for her. Therefore, the lady decided not to lose her chance and quickly jumped back. Trying to reach her goal, Suran jumped back and accidentally landed right on top of the prince's head. He cried out in surprise, not expecting such an unexpected attack. Having caught the panda, the prince felt the softness of its body. The servant, observing what was happening, noticed that this furry creature did not want to leave his master. Taking the panda in his hands, the prince realized that this could become a problem. He declared that after she was brought to order, he would take her with him to the palace. The panda smiled happily. Because as soon as she gets to the palace, she will have a chance to act and she will not waste such an opportunity. The prince stood in the courtyard, holding his little boy in his arms and listened attentively to the reports of his subjects. There have been quite a lot of urgent cases in recent days. Pandochka, lying in his arms, yawned and thought that she would have a chance to complete her mission. But time was running out, and the prince still had not finished his morning audience. Suran watched the emperor, noticing that he looked quite like a child. She thought about how difficult it was to be an emperor. He couldn't even afford to take a nap. Pandochka thought that the simple life of a pet was still the best and fell asleep in the arms of the prince regent. People around whispered that the pet's behavior was not one of his majesty. The emperor felt a slight irritation when he heard exactly what the people were whispering about. And his nephew thought that the emperor, coming to the audience with the panda, seemed not to recognize his authority. The nephew looked sternly at the emperor and then saw how the cute creature was sleeping peacefully in his arms and suddenly realized that he himself would not have given up such a cute pet. The little girl was spinning in her sleep, turning from side to side and turning to the prince's finger, bit him a little. His highness froze in surprise. People noticed this and were also shocked by what they saw. They then asked if this little creature had just been the one who had bitten the demon king. Nephew, he was still so happy from what he saw that he would like his uncle, who had already begun to annoy him, to bite the little man to death. In fact, the lady dreamed that she was eating New Orleans fried chicken wings. She loved them so much that in her sleep she enjoyed and got high from them every piece of... She couldn't understand why this chicken wing felt so hard to the touch. So she decided to bite it harder and gripped the prince's finger harder with her teeth. The prince was in a bit of pain, and he wanted the teddy bear to let go of his finger, which she was biting and did not dare to wake up his sweet pet. Pandochka, waking up, could not understand what was happening but when she saw blood splashing from the prince's finger, she panicked. 
she realized that she had bitten his finger, not his wing. The people, seeing the blood flowing from the prince's finger, shouted to call the imperial physician immediately. Pendochka tried to stop the bleeding by covering the wound with her paws, but it did not help. Then she decided to quickly insert the prince's finger into her mouth so that blood does not splash. The nephew thought that the lady was biting his highness again, and realized with a smile that she hated the prince as much as he did. He decided to find a way to steal this little creature. All the people watched in amazement and wondered if the little creature was trying to commit suicide. They thought that a prince with his character could turn an animal into a fur collar. Pandochka was in what are these from hearing the arrogant conversations of others. She was in a panic, not wanting to be turned into a fur coat, because she just didn't have enough of that for her happiness right now. The prince, still holding the teddy bear in his arms, looked at her, and she looked at him guiltily with his finger in her mouth. There was dead silence in the palace and everyone was even afraid to move. After some time, the prince was sitting at home. The doctor standing next to him said that a bandage had been put on and that it was necessary to avoid getting water on the hand. The doctor bowed and left the room. The prince looked at the panda sitting next to him on the floor and noticed that she did not dare to look him in the eyes, as if realizing her guilt. She wanted to calm the prince down, but she didn't know how to do it. Like a cat, she couldn't wag her tail because a panda's tail is short, and besides, she's too chubby for that. Pandochka looked at him with her sweet, big eyes, in which you could read a sincere apology. Because Suran did not know how else to atone for her guilt before the prince, the prince was touched by the cute animal and, petting it, said that he did not blame it for the bite. Then he caught himself thinking that for the first time he forgave someone who had physically harmed him. The little girl smiled with joy, and before the prince's eyes came memories of how a strange girl tried to kiss him at night. But why these memories came to him just now, he could not understand. The prince realized that his thoughts were distracting from important matters, and he tried to concentrate on the main thing. Suddenly, someone's female voice rang out and asked the prince if it was true that he was wounded and what the doctor said about it. The door opened and Empress Sean Rowley entered the room, attracting the attention of everyone present with her majestic appearance. She immediately approached the prince, asked about the seriousness of the wound, and asked to look at the wound. The man said that there was no need to examine the wound and asked if she wanted to ask anything. Shang Roli replied that she was on her way to visit the prince after hearing about his injuries. Pandochka looked at the empress and wondered how she manages to look so young, despite the fact that she is a widow and, in addition, of quite a respectable age. Shang Roli said that she heard about the prince being bitten by some beast. Seeing the panda, she pointed at it with her finger and asked if it was not the same animal that dared to do such an act. The prince got angry and asked how she could comment on this cute little panda. Su Ran wondered if the prince was protecting his pet and was pleasantly surprised by such care. The empress sat down nervously and apologized, saying she was worried about Hello Prince. She offered to get rid of the cruel and unruly beast as soon as possible. The prince looked sternly at Shang Ruoli and said that this was the last time she would say such things. It was clear from his appearance alone that he would not allow such a behavior with the little girl. V in sternly told the woman that he does not like it when other people interfere in his personal affairs, so he will not allow anyone to do it. The prince, looking at the animal, added that his name is Pelmashek, and you should treat the little man properly. He began to gently stroke the teddy bear, not taking his eyes off the cute animal, and the empress seeing this simply lost her temper with anger. A voice rang out again, but this time it was male. Prince and Shang Roli turned around. The voice said that the name Pelmashek suited the animal's fat body well. Pandochka was angry at how it was possible to talk like that. She was outraged that someone dared to call her fat because it was unacceptable for the young girl that she was. At that moment, a tall and handsome man entered, who went on to tell the prince that he had not known he liked such chubby creatures. Panda was shocked, looking at him. It was Chancellor Ming Ting, the prince's elder brother, known for his wisdom and authority. The prince asked Ming Ting why he was here, and not in the royal office where he should have been to perform his duties. The brother said that he had gone to Zhang Yan to find out about the situation of the people and had just returned because the way was dangerous. 
He wondered why the prince was chasing him away without giving him a chance to drink. Pendochka looked at both of them admiringly, meanwhile pondering what the relationship between the brothers really was. Ming Ting noticed that the little creature was looking at him and said with a smile that it was adorable. He held out his hand to the little girl to greet her. Prince Yifen saw his brother trying to touch the panda and sharply grabbed the glass of water and threw it at Ming Ting. His highness was not going to share his favorite with anyone. Ming Ting managed to catch the mug, but it turned out to be hot. He exclaimed that it hurt a lot and asked why the prince did it. He had never allowed himself such antics before. Prince Yifen looked at his brother and asked if he wanted a drink of water. Taking the panda in his hands, the prince added that he does not like it when other people touch his belongings and personal items. And he added that this animal is his personal pet. Ming Ting told the prince that he was not like other people and that he would not do this because he did not like such soft and small things, so the brother could not worry about the fact that he would claim this animal. The brother said that he likes majestic and powerful things, and the Pandoshka is not included in their list, so it is of no interest to him. The empress said she needed to return to her residence and said goodbye to everyone. Although in reality she was in no hurry, it was unbearable for her to stay here. She glared at the panda, thinking she'd never seen the prince regent so excited about anything. This beast looked strange, and she must not let it charm the prince. The empress ordered the servants to catch this creature and bring it to her immediately. The creature humiliated her in front of the prince, and she wanted to flay him, cutting him into pieces. The prince and his brother sat next to each other, discussing state affairs, and the princess lay listening to their boring conversation. Of course, she was not interested in political relations in the middle of the empire. Pandoshka became bored, and she decided to slip away quietly, hoping that no one would notice her disappearance. Su Ran thought of doing more interesting things than talking about politics. The prince noticed how the little girl was trying to slip away and in a stern voice asked where she was going. He ordered her to turn back immediately, saying that he would not tolerate such behavior. Pandochka became upset, lowering her ears. She just wanted to go for a walk and play, but the prince was indifferent to her wishes. This upset Su Ran, but she decided not to risk it and stay. The prince added that the little animal must sit next to him and is not allowed to go anywhere until he personally allows her to leave somewhere.